All right, for the last couple of weeks, we've been staging our Canadian Olympic Moments uh, knockout tournament uh, down to the final, and one of the finalists uh, is an event that all three of us were at, of course, that being the gold medal win by the Canadian Olympic men's hockey team in 2010 here in Vancouver. Um, Jason, you've been in Whistler, actually, I recall, for the first week of the hockey tournament covering biathlon? Is that what you were covering? I, I wiped that memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but a, you were in the a longer but, a memory of mine. <laughs> but you were in the uh, you were in the arena for the gold medal game. Um, what stands out for you six years later? Yeah, well, I mean, there was a lot of tension in that arena. I mean, Ryan, you had, you had back then Ryan Miller playing uh, as well as he ever had, in fact, playing the best that Ryan Miller. I mean, that was the year he won the Vesna, and that that was. I mean, it was Ryan Miller's tournament. And uh, although uh, the Canadians mostly controlled play, there was a lot of real doubt about whether they would be able to win that game or not. Uh, a lot of real questions about whether Roberto Luongo would be able to win that game or not. Um, and the late goal ties it, and you're thinking, like, they're going to lose this, aren't they? And you could feel that, that kind of feeling was palpable uh, in the arena. And uh, the goal kind of came out of nowhere. Like, it was super surprising. It was scored from a spot you never would have expected Ryan Miller to, to be beat from. Obviously, an amazing, every, you know, everyone's seen the replay, an amazing play from Sidney Crosby. But Miller, I mean, Miller got caught by his own success, I think, in that situation because he had been aggressive all tournament long, and he went out to challenge uh, Sidney Crosby. He didn't think he would be able to get uh, to a stick in time, and because he did that, he kind of got caught in the middle of trying to make a save and trying to challenge, and that's why the goal went in. Uh, Ed, you've been to many Olympic Games, uh, and we had 32. We started with 32 mm -hmm. contenders for Canada's greatest Olympic moment. Does the does Sidney Crosby's golden goal for you um, merit being one of the two finalists? Yeah, I, I think so. I've got to step outside myself and, and recognize what that meant, you know, the time and the place and everything it symbolized. Uh, not for me, but for everybody else. So I, I, I get that totally. I've, I've got two real distinct memories from that game. One was, uh, we'd, you may remember, we'd run out of tickets in, 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 the, uh, in the main press box. So I was up at the nosebleed, but I looked one section over and there was Donald Sutherland, Wayne Gretzky, and Prime Minister Stephen Harper, along with all the security. So there was that, and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, when, when the overtime started, I, there started deadline pressure started to accumulate. So I took my blog, my computer, and went down into the uh, in, into the media workroom. And now there was a delay between the broadcast feed we were watching and what was going on the ice. So I actually heard the roar of the crowd about three seconds before the goal was scored. So for those three seconds, I knew I knew Canada had won the goal. That was a little surreal. So yeah, it, it, it was neat. It, 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 it was a great moment. It was, it was a great moment on top of so many other moments though. Um, and, and I guess the singularity of it maybe, that's maybe why I don't rate it as highly as some of the other things I've seen. But if they had lost, like that, I think oh. that the, that's the, the well, biggest the way difference. With the, yeah, with the if crazy goal. If they had lost to the and, Americans yeah. in that way, in that overtime, after giving up the late goal, yeah, yeah. I, it would have. I mean, it would have been heartbreaking. No, no, and that's why. That's why it's got to be up there. They're like for so many reasons, it's got to be up there. What moment from 2010 then stands out for you, like at the top of your mind? Wow, that's you know, this is going to sound crazy. It's Neil Young playing at the closing hmm. ceremonies and looking and seeing these athletes crying. Um, that's the one that sticks with me. You asked me, and that was the first the first image that popped in my head. Now I can think about it a little more, and and give you you know a, a, a Billado and Johnny Rochette and all these things one after another. But there was something about that that just seemed to uh, encapsulate the whole experience and capture so much of the emotion of those 17 days. Uh, Jason, um, Roberto Luongo is not the first person who's remembered for the 2010 tournament, but it was when he came in, when he replaced Marty Brodeur, and Canada had been struggling and was frankly nearly out of the tournament in the early going. And his presence either was a coincidence, but it seemed to change Canada's fortunes. And yet he wasn't the key player, was he? No, he definitely made some key plays. He definitely calmed things down. 
Uh, but he wasn't the key player, though. I mean, it should have been his job from the beginning. I think. I, you know, I, I think that that he was in a. It was his year. You know what I mean? It, I don't think that they should have gone to Berdour just because Berdour had done it before. Uh, I think he was the right fit for that team. Uh, Berdour's style didn't really fit a really sound defensive team, uh, and uh, it, it was. In many ways, it was him proving he could get it done because, you know, the years before had been, at least in 2009 leading into that, the, the big loss against Chicago in Game 6. People were wondering, can Roberto Luongo do it in the playoffs? Can he win big games? And I think it was a big hurdle for him to overcome, but it definitely helped him to, to have it in Vancouver, to have it be at home and uh, to have the fans kind of behind him and looing all the time rather than to, I think he would have had a more challenging time of it if that tournament was played in Europe. Uh, our colleague Paul Chapman has often said that uh, we don't celebrate the great moments the well, way he always we wants, should. He wants statues for everything. I mean, right. he wants, he, you know, give Crosby a statue. Give like the whole city <laughs> would just be like statues of events. The Lions won the Grey Cup statue. <laughs> Well, no, the Canucks he made it to the no, Stanley Cup final. Statue. I don't think he wants statues on the Lions winning the Grey Cup. But, but he does. Statues. But he does want a Crosby statue. Out. He. He, he doesn't, wants multiple, st I'm telling you, he wants multiple, he wants statues, like it would be just a museum, like a, a, a road, nothing but statues, you know? So I think Statue? you like that. Oh yeah, for Crosby, absolutely, and and I've I, I, you know I've said this this a ton of times. I mean, you go around our city, and and, and the uh, the mementos uh, of 2010 are so few and far bet between, and it's usually be and it's mostly because the IOC, I believe, has to sign off on any time their precious five rings are used. But I would like to see something there because for me that that was really the defining moment of the Olympics and the defining moment of our uh, going back to the miracle. Mile in 1954. Okay, well, Ed will be at Rio, so check him out at provincesports.com throughout the month of August.